that's the most important thing. The most important thing is not obeying bad rules. It's diminishing the threat to our existence by producing enough energy. South Africa has been struggling with load shedding for 14 years. How do we get out of our chronic energy crisis? Well, Russell Lamberti, Executive Director for Research and Strategy at Sarkelicher, believes that we should be taking the power back. So Russell, you wrote a piece, which I found very interesting, and we'll link to that in the description, about the need for independent energy security in South Africa. And how do you propose that we get out of this crisis? I think the, the meta answer to your question is that I don't have the answers for how to solve the energy crisis, um, nor does the Minister of uh, Energy, uh, nor does the leadership of ESCOM, and nor does any single group of activists or, or analysts. Um, solutions to uh, exceedingly complex and vast market problems are uh, dealt with by decentralized entrepreneurship responding in various ways and means and in, in multiple different contexts to the particular challenges to the partic particular technologies and the price signals that are that are provided by the market. So the meta answer is that we need um, a free market in energy, which is virtually the polar opposite of what we have now. Um, I think the thrust of the article, however, and we'll get into this in a little bit more detail in, uh, as we go, uh, is that that's not going to be handed to us um, on a policy platter, as it were, by um, the state um, who is benefiting uh, in several ways from maintaining this monopoly on energy. Um, so the, the argument that I make is that we're going to have to claim energy freedom rather than simply advocate for it. I think we should keep advocating for better policy and better energy policy, but I don't think it's going to be as forthcoming as we hope. And I think therefore we're going to have to actually take steps to uh, protect our vital interest. And it is a vital interest. Right. So Russell, there's been much fanfare regarding the lifting of the cap on private energy generation to 100 megawatts. But we are seeing quite a lot of red tape surrounding those IPP license applications. I saw the Chamber of Mines, the Minerals Council, uh, remarking in a press statement this week that uh, you know their members, their mines are struggling with these applications and they do have the capacity to, to generate <clears throat> electricity. But now you know many people would point to that and say, well, look, this is a sign that the government is pushing in the right direction towards reform. We've been saying to our clients that actually this was reform that was foisted upon the government, uh, very reluctantly adopted. But, you know, I think the glacial pace of reform perhaps suggests that we're running out of time and we don't have that luxury of waiting. What is your thought on, on reforming our way out of this problem? Yes, I, I think you've basically summed it up very well in, in the sense that we... we we might have a government starting to, to nudge and edge in the right direction, um, but it is kind of fiddling while Rome burns. It, uh, it is far too little, far too late, and of course continues to create these regulatory traps and hurdles and barriers. So now you've got to uh, get licensed and you've got to uh, submit applications and so on, and that sits in another a uh, few layers of bureaucracy that creates kind of a, a new set of uh, opportunities for regulatory capture and so on and corruption. So, you know, basically, I think, I think this is kind of uh, far too little, far too late. I, I think we must think more along the lines of that what government is doing by maintaining its monopoly on energy and not providing it enough of it um, is really a, an attack on the vital interests of the citizens of the country, households, businesses, and society at large. Um, we have structured our modern existence on the, the supply, the affordable supply of electricity. Um, it doesn't take a genius to understand that if we have major uh, blackouts, grid failures um, that take perhaps weeks to, to restore, um, that you have not just enormous financial losses or, or economic damage, but potential uh, social chaos that, that could have absolutely disastrous outcomes. So um, I think the, the idea is really to move towards um, claiming 
energy freedom. Now, the ideal system is a, is a free market for energy. We have, we have a state-run, centrally planned market for energy by and large. Um, yes, there's reforms at the margin. Yes, that monopoly is not 100% absolute. There is solar production. There is uh, some things going on on the sidelines. Um, but basically, we have a state-controlled energy market, and we need to, to create a free market for energy. And one of the big features of that, Dave, is that you don't know what the optimal energy mix is. You don't know all the answers about how you should be supplied. Um, there is wind, there is solar, there is coal, there is nuclear, and there is, uh, you know, there's, there's hydro, and there's several other kind of options uh, and different technologies, new, old, uh, imported, homegrown. There's, there's all sorts of ways and means of producing energy to a very diverse market. There are, there are large buyers, there are small niche quirky customers for energy in far-flung places. There are you know, urban, large urban users. So it, you know, this is precisely the point of free markets and decentralized markets is that a central planner doesn't have all the answers, no matter how technically proficient they might think they are. And so that's where we want to get to. Um, but I think uh, what we're going to perhaps talk about next is, is the likelihood of, of government voluntarily reforming in that direction uh, is very, very low. And so I think we need to perhaps think of a different approach where we uh, ask for forgiveness rather than permission and start moving into the, the zone of producing energy, which, as I say, is a, is, is a vital interest um, and a very, very important, critical good that needs to be supplied um, to not just run your business, but to actually make modern life at all bearable and possible. Right, Russell. And, you know, you spoke about the various energy options that are on the table. There's been a big push for governments around the world to so-called adopt renewable energies. Um, you know, but I think that implies that same status orientation, that centralizing tendency. If there is a market case for renewable energy, let that emerge from the bottom up. But yeah, you spoke about this moral case for, for independent energy and, and private generation. How do you see that playing out, Russ? And what role do you foresee for Sarkilicha in that process? Look, I think, I think the first layer of this is we have to uh, delegitimize this monopoly on energy that, that government has. It's not the only monopoly that, that we should delegitimize. Um, and government is looking in other instances uh, to move towards monopolies where it hasn't had a full monopoly, for example, on healthcare. We need to delegitimize that as well because that goes strongly against um, our vital interests. Um, but we, so, so I, think, I think the first layer of this is to say the, the perpetuation of this virtual energy monopoly or this extreme energy dominance and central planning by the state is not just inefficient, it's not just suboptimal or anything like that, uh, sort of dry economic arguments. It's a moral failing. Um, it it is, a, is an attack on our vital interests. If we have, we already have rolling blackouts, we already have severe load shedding that curtails um, all kinds of activities that is hugely disadvantageous to, to flourishing life. Um, but more than that, we have the risk of tremendous, we have a tremendous risk of a, a single centralized point of failure um, in, in this entity called ESCOM, uh, which we know is, is uh, facing extremely difficult circumstances. We know that its, its infrastructure is in an advanced state of disrepair and decay. And we know that there is, there, there is tremendous amount of corruption um, and irregularity in terms of procurement and in terms of supply um, and in terms of sort of local interests that have captured this, this very large entity. This is, this is an intolerable central point of failure. The beauty of a decentralized market is that you can have failures. And in fact, you do have failures. Entrepreneurs fail all the time, uh, but it's not fatal to the system because you have so many nodes um, of success and those failures, which inevitably will happen, are kind of covered over because you have so many other points of, of success. The, the problem with centralizing production like this is that we, we face uh, a kind of existential threat in a way. So um, we have to delegitimize this morally. And then I think we have to think of, um, I think everything is on the table from, from legal strategies, exploiting loopholes in, in, in you know, the law and the constitution, encouraging local governments to, to exploit 
as, as much of their local legitimate local powers as possible, press into gray areas of the law, um, move into, into setting perhaps new precedent, and really uh, bringing people uh, with you in that process and saying, we can actually create enough energy. And that's the most important thing. The most important thing is not obeying bad rules. It's diminishing the threat to our existence by producing enough energy. So it's, it's a long road. It's a big strategy. And, and I think it's, it's complicated. And I don't have all the answers for, for how it's going to go. But I think the, the, the high level concept here is, while we might advocate for a form, we don't expect it. And we need to therefore act uh, proactively to to take it back, to take energy freedom back. Russell Lamberti, thank you very much. Let's hand over to you, our audience. What do you think is the cause of South Africa's ongoing electricity crisis and how can it be solved? Leave your thoughts down in the comment section below. Also, a quick notice that we at the CRA will be hosting a free webinar this Thursday, the 12th of May at 10 a.m. There are details in the link in the description below where you can register for this event we'll be discussing some of the main underlying trends influencing South Africa today, and also launching our exclusive client product, the Socioeconomic Survey of South Africa. That is our flagship reference guide. My name is David Ansara. This is the CRA. Until next time, take care.